and let us all that we can to build a better future. Folks, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie Sanders. That's right. Bernie Sanders is here talking about the Democrats and what they need to do for this midterm election cycle, what they need to do to get people to turn out to vote. But what I have to say to Bernie is, um, Bernie, the Democrats have had numerous opportunities to do the right thing, to actually stand in solidarity with working class individuals, to actually, you know, fight for progressive policy issues. And there's no excuse. The Democrats for decades uh, could have done so much for working class Americans, but because they're just as corrupt and inept as the Republican Party. Wait, let me take away that inept. They're they're corrupt and they know they're corrupt, just like the Republican Party. They're not going to do anything. But here we're going to get an analysis from Bernie Sanders, of all people, on, well, this midterm election cycle and his thoughts on it. I know, folks, we have to sit through this, but it's only fair. Hey, look. Let's hear his thoughts on it. Again, shout out to Case Study QB. He's wrongly being censored on Twitter. Senator, um, first, let me take your temperature on how you think things, how you think things are looking uh, for, for retaining control of the Senate, these tough contested races, in, in a, an environment that historically has been very difficult uh, for the party that controls the White House. Well, I would say that things are better than they were a few months ago, but as you indicated, Better, you mean the fact that um, cities like Jackson, Mississippi, Chicago, Illinois, Flint, Michigan, and so many others all across the United States are lacking safe, clean drinking water. People are being evicted from their homes and apartments. We have money for this ridiculous war in Ukraine. We've got money for other regime change wars. I mean, what? how are things better? Inflation is still on the rise. People are still struggling. There are many, many seats out there that are within the margin of error. So we don't know how these things will end up. Uh, end up. Uh, but to my mind, Chris, to answer your question, uh, if Democrats are going to do well in 2022, in my view, they've got to stand up very firmly for working families, make it clear that we are seeing unprecedented levels of corporate greed, unprecedented. That the Democrats are more than happy to be on board, Bernie. I mean, Nancy, Nancy Pelosi is doing insider trading. Her and her fantastic friends in the Democratic Republican Party in the United States House and Senate are doing insider trading. They're in on it, Bernie. I, I mean, are, 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 you, are you taking your brain medicine? I mean, your good friend Joe Biden didn't even give a crumb for student debt forgiveness. $10,000 of student debt forgiveness. Add on the interest. They ain't going to do anything. Um, Bernie, seriously, man, you have fallen so far since 2016, and dare I say it, since 2020. The levels of concentration of ownership in this country, all the while working families are struggling, in many instances seeing a decline in their standard of living. So I think now is the time, if you want to win an election, to say, you know what, I'm on the side of the vast majority of Americans, black, white, Latino, I'm prepared to take on greedy, powerful corporate interests who are enjoying record-breaking profits while you Americans can't afford it. Where were the Democrats in 2021 when force to vote was an important issue, force to vote for Medicare for All? Where were the Democrats uh, for March for Medicare for All? That was just a year ago. Where were the Democrats for the three-day general strike summit meeting? You know, Bernie, you and AOC had to get your arm twisted just to even show up at Chris Small's Amazon labor union event. All right. And since then, you know, a lot of workers still at Amazon are still struggling with all the issues impacting uh, them at those warehouses. Look, I get it. Washington DC is a disgusting swamp bubble, but you are clearly sheep dogging people into the democratic party and making people vote blue, no matter who, but if nothing fundamentally changes and the Democrats were still on board with Roe v. Wade dying right before them under a Democratic presidential administration, then it's clear to me that voting Democrat won't matter. That's why I say to folks, don't vote Republican, don't vote Democrat, vote third party, vote independent. Health care, can't afford to send your kids to college and are working for starvation wages. That, to my mind, is how you go forward and win. All right. All right. So let's unpack that. Winning. What does winning look like to people like Bernie Sanders? What does winning look like to somebody who not once, but twice had the Democratic Party commit election fraud on him? This is true. This is a very true thing that impacted Bernie Sanders 
presidential campaign in 2016 and 2020 in the Democratic primary. I'm talking about the Democratic primary, YouTube, not any other general election. So there you go, because let's face it, YouTube will do anything it can to silence and suppress people. But we have to really talk this over about Bernie. The Democratic Party won't do jack for regular working class citizens. They're okay with turning a blind eye with people being evicted from their homes and apartments. They're okay with billionaires buying farmland. They're okay with the infrastructure falling apart. And let's talk about this migration crisis that's happening. Look, the actions of the governors of, of Texas and Florida are deplorable. Let's face it. They're using human beings as pawns, but they're calling out all the sanctuary cities, sanctuary cities that are mostly run by Democratic mayors and states that have Democratic governors, more or less, give or take. But when push comes to shove, let's look what happened at Mars's Vineyard. They were there for 44 hours. Bye, bye, bye. No follow through. Let's talk about the migrants that were sent to Chicago. Well, Democratic mayor, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, she bust them to DePage County. Now, I, I do hope that all these migrants are going to be taken care of. I mean, the way they've been abused by both political parties is downright deplorable. But Bernie, the Democratic Party is just as guilty as a Republican Party. Democratic Party is just as corrupt as a Republican Party. The same people who donate to the Republican Party donate to the Democratic Party. Same people who donate to the Democratic Party donate to the Republican Party. It's one big club and you ain't in it. And somehow you're okay with how the Democrats have been pushing the progressive movement. Dare I say it, putting the word progressive through the mud to where what does what does it even mean anymore? So I got another statement here from good old Bernie. And again, shout out to Case Study QB, who is wrongly being censored on Twitter. Um, Bernie's talking about the resurgence of the union movement after the pandemic. So here's the thing. Yeah, it's great seeing this union movement happen, but we need to start talking about worker co-ops. We need to start talking about workers that can actually, you know, gain the rewards of all their hard work. I also want to acknowledge YouTube super chat too. Shout out to Mahmoud Rani. I'll need penicillin next time I feel the burn. Oh, oh, that is a burn. LOL. <laughs> Uh, anyways, I, I just said LOL as a just as a response. Oh my goodness, I am I am I am becoming absorbed into the machine. One of the the most striking features of uh, the last two years, w which have been strange in many ways, obviously uh, coming out of the worst parts of the COVID pandemic, pandemic still with us, inflation high, labor markets very tight, has been this raft of union organizing, unlike anything that we've really set, seen in, I think it's fair to say decades, um, the NLRB um, yeah. showing the, the union elections what? won by mid-year. You can see that spike there in 2022. Um, it's been about 20 years since we've seen this. What, what do you think's going on here? <laughs> it ain't hard to tell you, to figure out. Workers are working in many instances, longer hours for low wages, and with inflation, they're falling further and further behind you. You wanna know what's going on in the last 49 years? Real wages today are lower than they were 49 years ago, despite an increase in product productivity. Almost all of the new income and wealth is going to the people on top. And what working people are saying, excuse me, I can't afford to buy a house. I can't afford to send my kids to college. And yet during the pandemic, the billionaire class saw a $2 trillion increase in their wealth. That's what's going on. People are standing up, fighting back. We've been involved in many of these strikes. We're involved in this railroad situation right now where you're seeing the most ugly type of corporate greed imaginable. Railroads, five major railroads made 20 billion in profits last year. Meanwhile, the last six years, they laid off a third of their workforce and when workers get sick and they have to stay home, they are in a position to lose their jobs. So what you're seeing right now are workers saying enough is enough. You know, you guys on top, you can't have it all. We need an economy that works for all of us. Unions are one vehicle that help people get decent wages and working conditions. You know, I have to say. People are acknowledging here in the live stream chat. Hey, Bernie, uh, you know, you helped sign off the wealth transfer also, uh, you have to remember that Bernie Sanders has also been supporting a lot of unpopular Democratic bills as well. So, look, uh, enough from Bernie All right, at this point. I mean, no matter how the midterms will play out, especially uh, for this election cycle, it's clear to all of us that Bernie Sanders 
has done very little to really address the ongoing corruption of the Democratic Party and what the Democratic Party has done to his name, uh, what it's done to, to the progressive movement, and all in all confidence in the fact that no one in the two-party system is going to do a damn thing to help us out. They're okay with us suffering. Whether or not the Democrats maintain their seats or get a slim majority or get more seats or whether or not the Republican red wave comes right on through, nothing will fundamentally change. The corporations will have the final say. The banks will have the final say. The hedge fund managers, the private equity firms, Wall Street. And the thing is, all the while, what will it take for regular voters to wake up your politicians don't like you, they don't think about you, and they sure as hell don't respect you.